you the island people tale and know that it's true cause I love it so well Jolly Mon sing for his supper every night people fed him good cause he treated him right whoa 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 Jolly Ma that's your part oh Jolly Ma yeah that's it I say oh Jolly Ma everybody singing oh Jolly Ma I came here in 1979, St. Croix is where I started, and I fell in love. I fell in love with them. It's beautiful. You know, these islands, the, the people, the fish, the, 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 just the, the green, the trees, the sea life, you know. I mean, uh, the sailing, the snorkeling, the diving, everything about it. I just, I, mean, I came out of a snowbank in Michigan, so I was like, oh, look at this. Even the smell, the frangy pangy, the night blooming jasmine. Uh, so it, it captured my heart instantly. And my first impression, man, I was in love. I just, I, I was in awe. I was in love. You got your watch on? It's April 19th. I don't have mine on. I don't, well, it's just mine. I don't have one. Yeah. Island time. <laughs> It's kind of hard to take and do a professional video when you don't wear watches and you don't have any idea of what day it is, month it is. It don't matter, man. It don't matter. <laughs> but the best one is that old timer that came up to my beach over there that one time. Three mm -hmm. beard, long straggly hair hanging on out. He had all of his lines on his face kind of went all the way down through his neck, down out the end of his clothes. And he walks up to me, he's got this old beat up thing, canoe out there with an outrigger on it. And he walks up to me on the beach all leather and tan and really like red eyes and whatnot. And he walks up to me and he goes, excuse me, sir, do you know what year it is? <laughs> the winter. I took him upstairs and I said, that's it for you, man. The dinner's on me, rum's on Charles. And we just sat down and chatted about how we lost his time. The music at first for me, I always loved music as a kid, but the music also had a, another charm for me. I, it was a vehicle. When, at a very young age, I realized this love of adventure, this love of guiding the people of the world, and all this stuff, the fascinations of, of travel. Uh, I knew I knew I was gonna have to come up with a career sooner or later that could, uh, that could enable me to travel. I don't, I'm not a man of means, I come from a, a middle class family in northern Michigan. But the idea of working my whole life to 65 years old to have enough money to go out and see and travel wasn't my idea of living a life for me. You know, it works great for other people, but I couldn't wrestle down with it. I wanted to see and do now. And the music looked like that was the vehicle. I noticed these guys playing. I've watched them traveling the world playing music. They were always around campfires. They were always happy. They were singing songs. There was always dancing going on. There was always girls around them. They were sailing their boats. They were on the beaches. Those are the characters. That's that's what I want. So I start realizing if I'm going to make a go of this thing, I'm going to have to go get into a, a one man band. But once I didn't have this John Denver voice, I didn't, uh, I was a frog, a bullfrog, still am. But I realized that there's a gimmick in it. And I watched that movie, now they're going to laugh at this, Mary Poppins, where that one man band come on, when he has got, that was Dick Van Dyke. He's got a drum on his back and boom, he's got the drum going there and cymbals between his knees and spoons he's playing. He's got a hat, boom, smash, ding, doo -doo -doo, little horn going on. I just looked at that and I laughed and I laughed and I said, you know what, there's a way, oh, there's a way, there's a way. You know, there's a lot of different people that are playing throughout the islands, all got their little niche and their little say. You know, you've got Foxy and he's got his Clipsonian way and what his issues are in the world and you've got Keto Rhymer that's up the way. And then... There's, uh, there's nobody that was really carrying on the, the, the history of these islands in the piratical format. So I used that. And I used it 
before I, I sunk my last boat, and that was Esperanza. And uh, but I needed to get another boat. So what Happy R really is is a vehicle that I used. I took that little pirate thing just two steps further, and two years before Walt Disney's came out with the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. I had this show and I was up on this Marina Key Hill and I was working this angle, trying to work out how many R's I could stuff in a, in a two R show. I worked by the R, I got paid by the R, I got not enough R's in a day, it just, and it goes and it goes and it goes and it goes and it gets silly and next thing you know what comes up, a salute, happy R, when everybody does it with the I now, and conch shell blowing contest and put shakers on the tables and everybody gets dancing and singing and songs that everybody can sing along to, Pirate Toasts, we got Question and Answer. It's, it's just a great big play on that word, R. <laughs> Another day, it's sunset on the island. It's time to play. King of the mountain, man in the shadow, he came to see the play. He lost the plot. And sailed away down by the bay. He just sailed away. Free to fly. Within the rules and regulation. Tell me how to die. Get through that wall of limitation. With the gulls by the sea, I watch the ship set sail away down by the bay. He just sailed away. Here comes your part now. Here comes your part. Sail. 